Hi there, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you what Azure App Service is, what it offers you and how you can use it. Let's begin. Whether you're working on a front-end application, back-end code or deploying RESTful API, you need some sort of platform to host that services for you. If you have been doing this before, you might have been using virtual machine or hosting it with some third party vendor. Azure provides you same functionality with platform as a service, Azure App Service that lets you host all of your application needs right within the Azure portal. One thing interesting with that is you can host either Linux or Windows virtual machine based on what you need. So how does Azure App Service works? Normally, you have a user going to a browser and typing in a URL and they see the results that is being hosted by the website itself. Azure App Service also provides you the same experience. Whenever you sign up for a new resource, you get a default domain in Azure Websites .net subdomain, which lets you host all these resources and all the files for you that you need for your website. The files can either be static web page application or it can be dynamic and more complex application based on your business needs. If you want to use more of business logic in the application, there are some other resources that you can use, but let's leave that for later discussion. So whenever you use Azure App Service, it's being hosted on an App Service plan. The App Service plan itself is a web server that's serving all your files. You can use web applications, API, Azure Functions and Logic Apps to host all, your, uh, all these resources on the App plan itself. As I mentioned earlier, this is a fully managed service, so you don't have to worry about any updates or patches, but again, you don't get the admin rights to the underlying host itself. App Service Plan runs with the number of CPU and memory count based on what tier you use, so you can opt for a higher tier and get more CPU and more memory power. But if you want to use free tier or the shared plan, you have that uh, lower CPU consumption and availability as well. You can host as many services as you can on a single app service plan, as long as you have enough resources to accommodate all the workloads for you. Let's look at the, some of the functionality of the app service. If you look at the screen, you have multiple languages and framework support, whether you're running ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, Java, Ruby, or any Python applications, you can literally just spin up the app service container or app service resource and host all your applications that you have in any different languages. It's a fully managed platform, as I said earlier, so you don't have to worry about any availability or patching, but also you have the backup and recovery options that you can configure and use with your app service. This is a built-in automatic scale and load balancing. If you are on the higher tier, you basically have all the services available for you if you can configure the rules itself. The CI CD is really a hot topic in app service. Developers usually want their code to be pushed automatically to this application whenever there's a new code change. And with this support natively in the app service, you can literally spin up a new container or new slot application as soon as there's a new code changes in the repository. So the last piece is security of your application. I just support native integration of third party service provider for authentication and their Active Directory itself so that you can make your application secure just with the little changes to your code itself. Not to mention that you can pull up your old on-premises application and also run them in the Azure using the hybrid support, which is really fancy. If you love using Visual Studio Code, you'll be surprised to know that Azure support all the extensions for web application so that you don't have to leave the editor. You can deploy your code, you can debug your code, and also make all the changes right from the code editor and push your code to the production right within the VS Code environment itself. Also, there's a full support for popular frameworks like WordPress and all of the Joomla platform that you can use all the templates and deploy your application without having to do any manual configurations. For now, let's go in and I'll show you how to deploy a web application using Azure Portal. So as you can see on my screen, I'm logged into Portal itself. So make sure you have an account and an active subscription before you get started. I'll search for a resource 
uh, group here and i'll first of all create a new resource group and call it uh, call it a web application i'll choose a location that's nearest to me i'll just go with the canada central review and create you can put tags on resource group if it's important for you if you want to track all the cost and um, do other filterings but uh, i'll just leave it as, as it is for now and i should already see a web app resource right here you can search web app on the top as well you should be able to search it from here but since i already have it here i'll just click on the web app um, the resource group will be whichever resource group i was already in when i was pressing the add button i'll just give it a name here i'll just give it some weird name. oh it's already used So I'll give it a name here, just call it something that's globally unique. Um, you, you cannot have a same application with the uh, duplicate name. So let's give it a unique name. For runtime, I, I'll tend to use Node 12. So I won't deploy any code, but I'll just tell you Node 12 to show how it looks like. For the region, again, um, I can choose a different region from my resource group. It's not uh, mandatory to have that in the same resource uh, in the same region, but uh, I'll, I'll try to choose same re uh, region as uh, my resource group itself. We have an option to do a uh, code or a Docker container. If you're using Docker images, you can literally just deploy a Docker image itself on the web application. So you don't have to do any other configurations to make it run on the web app. With that, if you see on the bottom this app service plan, this is what I was talking about, the actual hosting server. This is where you choose how much resource you want to provision for that web application. If I go into dev test, you can see the one gig memory and 60 minutes per day compute is totally free for us. If you go over 60 minutes, you will be charged extra. There will be some separate charges, but for first 60 minutes, it's totally free of cost. I'll stick with the I'll stick with this um, F1 tier for now. You can, if you switch between production and the dev, you'll see some of the changes in the features. Like you cannot have a custom domain on the free tier. You cannot do auto scaling. You cannot have any slots here or the backup is not an option if you go here. Um, there are some settings in here in the free tier on, on the dev test here. Like, you know, you can have a custom domain if you go to the B1 tier, but you have to pay a 1682 depends on um, which region you are in. So I'll stick with the free tier for now. You can always change this later if you need to, but for now that's that's good for me. Uh, this is giving it a default name. I can choose to give it a different name if I if I you know feel like I want to have a different name for my app service plan. I'll just give it a new name. Monitoring, so you can technically enable the application inside that keeps track of all the performance counter and any error logs for your application so that you can refer back if something goes wrong with your application. Since this is a test application, I won't really deploy, but I'll just quickly show you that uh, you can choose any existing app service, app inside uh, resource, or you can choose to deploy a new app, app inside resource group for your application while you're doing this. I'll leave the tags for now again. The last page just show you how you can validate and if there's any issue, uh, this will call out specifically that you haven't configured something or if there's something wrong with the application that you need to fix before you deploy it. So I'll click create and wait for this to finish. So my app service is ready at this point. I can simply press go to resource. It's gonna take me to the web application and on the same page, you should be able to see the URL. You can simply click on the URL and that's gonna take you to the web application, whatever it's hosting right now, which is out of box code, which I haven't done any uh, changes to. As you can see it says, hey, no developer, no developer that's coming from, you know, what kind of runtime you chose uh, during the deployment process. So at this point, you have your app service deployed using Azure portal. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any ideas, uh, if you'd like to see any new content uh, based on what you're working on. And subscribe if you wanna stick around and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.